What's going on YouTube? This is Reggie again doing part four of my collection video. This is going to entail the latter part of my night slash dark fragrances. Starting off the collection is Rokas Man. It's a very sweet, sugary gourmand. Very nice presentation. As you can see with the bottom popping off the top, a very nice comforting sprayer. One of my favorites, it uh, doesn't project um, that well, lasts maybe four hours on my skin, but it is a very unique fragrance, therefore uh, it remains one of my favorites. In the back we have Escada Magnetism. 3.4 ounce bottle of course very nice bottle well made as most of the youtubers have already mentioned it is a grape soda like fragrance and uh, you can't put it any much better than that it's a very dark uh, grape like fragrance as the bottle kind of uh, represents the purple very nice fragrance. This one actually uh, lasts uh, quite a little bit on my skin and uh, also projects pretty well. Um, I would probably say this is a very underrated discontinued fragrance um, if it wasn't for YouTube. Not too many people know about this uh, or many Escada fragrances for that matter. Right in the middle we have Bulgari's work of art Bulgari black beautiful bottle great presentation sprayer sucks but everything else about it is very very unique it is um, again YouTube reviewed black tar rubber notes um, not gonna go too in-depth Again, this has been reviewed to death. Very good fragrance, so um, I would see wearing it uh, out on a date um, with somebody that you would already know uh, prior and knows that you're a fragrance head. Uh, otherwise, um, the tar note may put them off. Uh, they may be in a little bit of a shock if you overspray it. Uh, we'll move on to Burberry's London. Uh, again, another one that's been reviewed to death, so I won't cover it too much. This is a uh, very nice, subtle scent. Um, as people have said, it is just like um, a fresh-cut pine tree. Uh, I don't know how Burberry did it, uh, but they created a masterpiece in this fragrance. I haven't smelled anything like this yet. Um, if you could imagine um, Christmas Day with uh, a fresh cut pine tree um, in your living room that is what this smells like I smelled most of the Burberry line I'm not entirely impressed uh, with any of them except for this one in particular in the back we have Lolita Lempica O Masculin this fragrance was actually brought to me uh, by my sister. She uh, recommended it to me and I have been nothing but thoroughly impressed by it. Um, it's anise, anise, anise. Uh, think of licorice in a bottle. This is what it is. Um, very subtle gourmand smell. Lasts very long. I get 10 plus hours with it. Uh, projects um, very well and uh, is an overall pleasing uh, dark scent. Again, you may or may not like it because of the anise note. We will move up, as you can see, to my Varvados collection. Start off in the back. I'm not going to pull these out because uh, it's just too cumbersome. All the way in the back we have John Varvados Artisan. It's a citrus uh, base fragrance. Um, Weak projection, uh, weak 
uh, longevity, but I um, I had to pick it up. It was very unique. I'm a big fan of the John Varvatos line, so I picked it up. Uh, you'll see I have um, all but two of the Varvatos fragrances, uh, the Rock Edition and uh, Artisan Black. And the reason why I haven't picked up Artisan Black is because it smells uh, very similar to Artisan. So maybe if I finish um, the original, I will pick up Black, but until then, uh, I will pass. I will move over to the original John Varvatos. Again, very nice bottle presentation. I give my thumbs up to John Varvatos for keeping it very minimalistic and simplistic in his collection. Nice leather bound glass. Tops very secure. Although, I will say that the juice inside does not last more than four hours on my skin. Uh, it's got a dark uh, cherry um, leather note to it. Very good smell, very subtle, um, very close quarter scent, but again, does not last on my skin. Um, it's unfortunate, too, because it is a very good fragrance. Um, but these make up for it. John Varvatos Vintage is actually my favorite out of the John Varvatos lineup. It represents everything that is masculine. It is dark, it is leathery, it is sweet, it is spicy. It is a masterpiece, if I could say. Just a fantastic fragrance. It projects well for the first two hours on my skin um, and lasts about six, um, which is actually pretty well from what I've heard uh, of other reviewers say. They're getting their projection is pretty weak and their longevity is pretty weak, but not on me. Uh, my skin may be a little bit different. Uh, this is the newly released John Varvatos Anniversary Edition, celebrating uh, 10 years of the John Varvatos lineup. Very nice bottle, chrome with a dog tag. Um, this is a very spicy fragrance, uh, very well, well made, well blended. Um, has the same DNA as John Varvatos Original. Um, but much spicier, lasts longer, lasts upwards of uh, six hours on my skin, and uh, because of the very pepper-like uh, spiciness, it uh, projects pretty well, and uh, a lot of people will get that pepper um, upon smelling. Now this is one of the most underrated fragrances um, I have smelled, and... Uh, I don't know why this isn't more popular, but more people need to get this fragrance and try it out. This is Hane Mori's HM. This fragrance is a gourmand chocolate and citrus bomb. And by bomb, I mean this thing projects. It lasts forever. It has a great floral dry down. Uh, with a gourmand chocolate dry down. Bottle is very nice and elegant. And at a, about $35 at your local discounter, you can't really beat that. We'll go ahead and move up to the ladder of my fragrances. Now, we'll start with this, one of my newest in my collection. Uh, thank you, Mark, for uh, recommending this on YouTube. This is Blue Sugar by Aqualina. It is um, my new favorite uh, Gourmand fragrance. As you can see, it's sitting amongst $100 plus dollar bottles, and uh, it's for good reason. It is magnificent when it comes to projection. It is magnificent when it comes to
the smell, which is an anise note with, as you can see, sugar. It is a gourmand that, in my eyes, tops just about every gourmand that I have smelled prior to it. It lasts a very long time on my skin and is a real um, eye-opener uh, for a $20 fragrance. Um, blew my mind when I first smelt it. It was really, really something else. This is a compliment getter. Uh, I would wear this out to uh, clubs, out into parties, uh, night out, uh, anywhere that you'd want to be uh, noticed. It is a very, uh, has a large projection cloud and uh, will get noticed. Um, we'll go ahead and move on uh, from that to Dolce and Gabbana is the one. Now I have smelled the one gentlemen and uh, not totally impressed. This one is uh, a much better uh, product if you ask me. I'm not a huge fan of the grapefruit top note in the gentleman, but this is um, tropical fruity uh, blend it's like fruit punch in a bottle this is phenomenal it is one of my uh, most complimented scents again probably one of the top five and that's why you see most of it is gone at least most uh, when you have a collection like mine very good product we'll move on to the YouTube King, Derry Mugles Angel Men Pure Malt. Now, I will preface this by saying that yes, this is a very good fragrance, and yes, um, it is amazing upon the initial spray with the whiskey boozy accord and the dry down um, with a slight amen feel to it. But, I'm sorry guys, this has been um, replaced. My new favorite, Pure Havan. My new contender for the best in the Thierry Mugler house. This is honey and tobacco with a nice patchouli dry down. This is amazing. A uh, really amazing scent. I really wasn't expecting much from this when I originally purchased it and I was shocked uh, upon letting this sit on my skin. It uh, lasts just as long as the original Pure Malt and projects just as much but this is a much easier to wear scent and a much more complimented scent I would say um, on my skin. I still adore Pure Malt, don't get me wrong, but Pure Havan is uh, really something else. Really just uh, a great creation. Again, uh, you'll know from my earlier videos that I was spo uh, speaking to a uh, Thierry Mugler uh, representative about this before and he agrees that this is probably the best in the lineup that they have. Uh, last but not least, under a minute we've got left is John Paul Gaultier's Le Mal. Now this one is, if you can see, I won't focus, the 200 ml. This is dubbed Le Maximal. This is the big boy. Not the 4.2, but the 6.7. Again, it's been reviewed to death, but it is one of my favorites, and that is why it sits upon top of the tier. Lavender, mint, vanilla, the whole works. Projection, everything. You just, you can't go wrong. You get compliments with it left and right. Um, ladies love it. Great overall fragrance. Alright guys, I'm going to wrap this up. Again... This is going to be collection video part four. I hope you guys enjoyed, and thank you for taking the time out to watch. Take care.